very much. We are here going to demonstrate uh, simple eye examination in a GP practice. What you need is very simple equipment. You need a snail and chart, which is uh, showing there, a three meters one. A uh, very simple, small chart. You just need to count three steps away, stick it on the wall, or somebody can hold it for you. And you need the patient to wear the glasses. And that's what we call the best corrected vision and do one eye at a time and then simple other equipment, an ophthalmoscope or a torch, magnifier, fluorescein and a cotton wood. So to check the vision, traditionally we check the right eye first. So what we do, we cover the left eye and then ask the patient to read the chart. So here we go, Julie. Uh, the bottom line, T-A-X-U-V-O-A, -A. can't read that. Okay, <laughs> excellent. So that's actually 6-6 six, six vision. And again, better. Bottom line, HVOA. Excellent. So that's roughly a reasonable, good vision, 6665. And that will give you a clue. This test is so important, it will indicate that the refraction is good, that the media is good, the lens is good, the vitreous, the retina, and back to the brain, the occiput. So the, all the visual pathways are normal when the vision is normal. This is the most important single test. The second test is to, thank you, Take the glasses off and then examine the for congestion or redness. And again, you look at the conjunctiva, which is the white part of the eye. There is a, a little skin film covering the sclera, which is the white part of the eye. The color part of the eye actually is the cornea, which is a dome, a transparent dome like the windscreen. And behind it is the color of the iris, whatever it is. And in the middle is the pupil. So you can get a lot of clues by looking at the conjunctiva is the redness around the cornea then we call it central or is it in the bottom in the corner the bottom in the corner of the lid and the eyeball then we call it fornicial and then ask the patient to look down as well thank you and there is a few blood vessels there but they are peripheral they're not near the cornea so probably julie you have a bit of dry eyes and then you look at the cornea reflection which is exactly that circle reflects back on me and you can see it on the cornea beautiful circle not hazy that means the cornea has no problems and then also you look at the pupil and then you can see the pupillary reaction by moving the light in and out and the pupil reacts well to light it's of a normal size and it is not distorted it's circular in shape so you have clues about that as well and of course you can ask about history of discharge if the patient has discharge you can stain also the cornea to see if there's any cornea problems there is no cornea problems in julie's eye so i don't need to really put the drops in one drop in they don't sting they don't cause any trouble the fluorescein drops occasionally people can be allergic to them so be aware if they are itching immediately wash it with saline and give them some antihistamines but extremely rare so this is a very simple test but you have to use a blue light which is usually on the tip of uh, a torch or the ophthalmoscope itself then the thing which most GPs can't do really examine the anterior chamber. You need a, a little magnifier like this and could you open your eye wide mom and then use a tiny beam of the light which is you can adjust your ophthalmoscope and you can look then at the eyeball and you can see the dome of the cornea and the iris behind it so her anterior chamber is quite deep but if they are in touch with each other then that indicates that the patient has a shallow anterior chamber and maybe acute glaucoma, which she doesn't have. So very simple. If it is difficult, don't worry. Refer them to us. And finally, to avert the lid. We can demonstrate that by asking the patient to look down. It's slightly uncomfortable, so you need to warn the patient. You pull the lashes as well as a lid, the lid margin, because if you pull the lashes, you will end without lashes. Ask the patient to relax and then push the cotton butt, excuse me, sorry, and that will avert the lid. So you are able to see behind. If there's any foreign body, you can remove it with a cotton butt. If there's any congestion or follicles or any problems, we call them concretions sometimes, you can see them as well. And then gently put the lid back. And that's what we call it, aversion of the lid. Very simple. The trick is pull the lashes as well as the lid margins and then press on the lid itself with the cotton butt and then push it back and that will avert the lid. It's a bit uh, discomfortable, isn't it? No? Fantastic. And that's it.
Okay, thank you.